How do you build resiliency to get through tough times? Are you having difficult times? On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about surviving tough times by building resilience. And I'll give you five top ways of how you can do just that. We all face challenges, crucibles in life that make us or break us, and our health is often the biggest crucible we will face. This podcast is designed to help you achieve your health goals through simple, strategic, and proven methods. In every episode, we'll learn about how to overcome your health crucibles and live your best life. Everybody, this is Mary Lee Aitenhan coming to you live from my dividend studio here in Brentwood, Tennessee for my podcast, Crucible. And on today's episode of Crucible, we're going to be talking about surviving tough times by building resilience with the following points, how to build resilience, practice acceptance, reach out to others, invest in your self-care, look for meaning and purpose, and stay motivated. My information today was researched by Dr. A's life book and helpguide.org. Lately, it seems that the world seems to be lurching from one crisis to another. We've experienced a global pandemic, dramatic changes to how we conduct our daily lives, economic uncertainty, and political and social turmoil, as well as an array of natural disasters. Then there are personal traumas that people are also dealing with such as the loss of a loved one, declining health, unemployment, divorce, violent crime, or tragic accidents. For many of us, this is a time of unprecedented struggle and upheaval. So whether the source of your disruption in your life is global, a global emergency or personal tragedy, or both, living through difficult times can take a heavy toll on your mood, your health, and your outlook. It can leave your your outlook, excuse me. It can leave you feeling helpless and overwhelmed by stress and anxiety. You may be painfully grieving all that you've lost, flooded by a slew of difficult, conflicting emotions, or uncertain about how to move on with your life. You may even feel that your life is totally out of control and you're powerless to affect whatever may happen next. Life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. Steve Maraboli in the book, The Life, the Truth, and Being Free. And while there's no way to avoid sorrow, adversity, or distress in life, there are ways to help smooth the rough waters and to regain a sense of control. Resilience is the ability to cope with the loss, change, and trauma that have been inevitable parts of life even before now. Angela Duckworth said, enthusiasm is common, endurance is rare. Building resilience can help you better adapt to life-changing events, cope with those turbulent times, and bounce back from hardship and tragedy. The role of resilience in times of crisis depends on the level of coping skills that you have learned. Hold yourself responsible for a higher standard than anybody else expects of you. Never excuse yourself, never pity yourself, be a hard master to yourself and be lenient to everybody else. Henry Ward Beecher. Why do some people seem to have a better ability to cope with adversity than others? While everybody's situation is different, it's true that people with resilience tend to have a higher tolerance for the emotional distress generated by hard times. And this is something that I learned firsthand, very young. (laughs) Um, When I was lifeguarding at a Lincoln Country Club, I was taking summer classes in college and this was my freshman, after my my freshman year. So I was 19 and sure enough, kids slipped off the high dive at that time. They still had high dives and this is probably why they don't. And he cracked his head open, fell completely flat, you know, on his back, hit his head. And I could literally see the, his brain. He cracked his complete skull open. And if you've ever had a head wound or dealt with a head wound, they bleed like you are dying. And I was I kept it under control. I didn't panic, you know, and I think I learned in that moment that you've just got to, you know, chill out and just think about the person, you know, we got EMS, we had to call his mother. It was just, 
it was a huge learning thing for me and also you know <laughs> very upsetting so i learned learned early on that you've just got to you know not panic and that helped serve me in my teaching career too because who would think in a music vocal music classroom the kids would um i had a boy uh break his arm he was the head football quarterback <laughs> not good broke his forearm thankfully um i had a girl who tripped on her flip-flops coming in the room broke her ankle and you know we're dealing with all of this and calling you know calling for ems um had probably the scariest moment when a girl had a seizure and she but first she passed out hit the chair fell on the floor you know and i could see it happening so i immediately was up there but i'm yelling at my at my students you know go run to the office tell them to call ems you know and i'm just praying that this girl doesn't you know i didn't have anything to put in her mouth um and she's praying she wouldn't swallow her tongue or bite her tongue off you know and off she goes ems they come in you know and every, it was it was horrible and probably the the worst thing i dealt with was a bomb threat in our high school and um it was it ended up being a hoax but we did not know that at the time and we went outside fire drill you know okay do you have you know do you have your roll call always had to take my um i always took my laptop my keys you know and and um whatever else i needed usually my grade book which was at that point you know in my laptop but um had to take roll and um and then we got bussed out away from the school you know like six or seven miles and at that point i thought oh my gosh and all the kids are panicking so we're on the bus trying to you know to keep them quiet and and calm so you, you i did learn professionally at least how to have that resiliency and to just not panic and you know completely lose my crap <laughs> right there you know either personally or on the kids so but the more resilient you are the better you're able to tolerate those feelings of stress and anxiety and sadness that accompany trauma and adversity and you can find a way to rebound from the setbacks do not judge me by my success judge me by how many times i fell down and got back up again nelson mandela we all go through bad times and we all experience disappointment loss and change and we all feel sad anxious and stressed at various times in our life but building resilience can help you maintain a positive outlook face uncertain futures with you know, your uncertain future with less fear and get through even your darkest days. So how do you build a resilient mindset? If you're more sensitive to emotional distress and you're finding it difficult to cope with hardship or adversity, it's important not to think of it as a character flaw. And that's exactly what I have done in my past. Resilience isn't a matcha quality and it's not fixed. It's an ongoing process your entire life. You think that by age, you know, whatever, I used to think this in my head, by the time I get to be X amount of age, you know, I'm gonna have everything figured out. Well, that, it just never happens. <laughs> and here, you know, it's like, even lately I realized it's like, I'm okay, I'm gonna be learning and growing my entire life because I, you know, I still don't have it all figured out or all, you know, completely mastered. So even if you struggle to cope with adversity in the past, you may at least be able to recognize some of the ways of coping that didn't help, such as numbing yourself with alcohol or drugs. And while it's difficult to imagine anything good coming out of traumatic experiences, building resilience can help you find any positives in the difficulties you faced. Surviving hardships can teach you important things about yourself and the world about you. It can help strengthen your resolve, deepen your empathy, and in time, enable you to evolve and grow as a human being. Building resilience can help you stay focused, flexible, and productive in both good and bad times. Feel less afraid of new experiences or of an uncertain future. Manage and tolerate strong emotions outside your comfort zone, even those you'd rather avoid like anger or despair. It strengthens your relationships and it improves your communication skills, especially under pressure. Bolster your self-esteem. Be confident you'll eventually find a solution to a problem, even when one isn't immediately apparent. You can develop and improve these qualities of resilient mindset at any time, 
regardless of your age, <laughs> your background, your circumstances. The following tips can help you face hardships with more confidence, help you cope better and make it through to, the, to a brighter, more hopeful day. So first of all, practice acceptance. Accept the situation. Change is an inevitable part of our life and many aspects of the changing world are outside of our individual control. You can't control what's happening to you and while it can be tough to acknowledge, railing against those events and circumstances outside of your, your control will only drain you of your energy and leave you feeling anxious and helpless. Accepting your situation, on the other hand, can free you up to devote your energy to the things that you don't have control of, that you do have control over. Make a list of those things you can't control and then give yourself permission to stop worrying about them. Accept change by looking to your past, looking back at examples of how you've coped. For me, it was those, you know, 911 moments <laughs> where I had to call 911, um, you know, of uncertainty, you know, it, it helped me to accept my current situation because I knew that I got through that, I could get through my current circumstances. Examining your past successes can also help you see past the current crisis and derive some confidence that you'll be able to pull through again. You also need to accept your feelings. It's tempting to believe that the best way to get through hard times is by ignoring those painful emotions and putting on a brave face or suck it up, keep going, you know, all those things that people tell us. But unpleasant emotions exist whether you choose to acknowledge them or not, and eventually they will surface. Trying to prevent your emotions from surfacing will only fuel your stress, delay the acceptance of your situation, and prevent you from moving on. By allowing yourself to feel your emotions, you'll find that even the most intense and upsetting emotions will pass. The trauma of those hard times will start to fade and you'll be able to find a path forward. You also need to accept and grieve your losses. Undergoing tough times usually involves some kind of loss, whether it's the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the loss of your old life, or the loss of a relationship. It's important that you allow yourself that opportunity to grieve. Only by facing your grief, acknowledging and mourning your losses, will you be able to heal and eventually move on with your life. Also, you need to reach out to others. Connecting with friends and family when you're going through tough times can help ease that stress, boost your mood, and make sense of all the change and disruption. Instead of feeling like you're facing your problems alone, you can draw strength and build resilience from having others to lean on. The people you reach out to don't have to have all the answers or be able to give you all of the advice in the world. They just need to be able to listen and not judge you. In fact, what you talk about or the words you use are often unimportant. It's that human connection of eye to eye, a smile, a hug, that's what makes all the difference to how you're feeling. Prioritize your relationships. Nothing carries the same health benefits as connecting face to face with someone who is caring and empathetic. These days, however, it's not always possible to see our friends and loved ones in person. I live 1200 miles from my, my daughter and her husband and my three beautiful grandsons, but we keep in touch by FaceTime, We've done Zooms. <laughs> um, and even my son, he's super busy too. And we, we will FaceTime him. And he's here in Nashville with us. But he's about a 45-minute drive away. He's only like less than 30 miles away. Um, but that's a great way to connect and feel like, oh yay, I'm, you know, we're not the only people out here left out here in the world. And also you can, of course, you know. FaceTime with all of your family, whoever it is, your friends maybe, that will give you that um, boost and that um, encouragement. So don't withdraw in tough times. That's usually the first thing that I tend to do. It's like I've got to take a step back and figure out what's going on. Um, and you may be inclined to, to do that, um, but don't fear the burden you know, of talking to your friends because more than likely they've been through exactly what you're feeling 
And that's what I have found often by when I bear my soul and share what I'm going through, then they share what they, it's an exact situation. And sometimes it's often even worse. So it's kind of like, you know, don't, don't wish for um, other people's um, sorrows <laughs> because they may be worse, you know, than yours. Um, good friends will consider you a burden as well. And they're more likely to feel flattered <clears throat> that you trust them enough to confide in them. Try to avoid negative people. Some friends are good listeners. They're kind and empathetic, but other people just seem to fuel negative emotions, leaving you feeling even more stressed, anxious, or panicky. Try to avoid anyone who magnifies your problems, criticizes you, judges you, or makes you feel bad, especially in the middle of a crisis. That's not the place and the, you know, the people you need to be surrounded with. But do expand your social network. Even though relationships are vital for good mental health, building resilience and getting through tough times, many, many of us feel that we don't have anyone to turn to in times of need. It's like you're the loner in a crowd of hundreds. Um, so improve your, your network and your, your support. If you know others who are lonely and isolated, be the one to take that initiative and reach out. Four, you also need to invest in your self-care. And this is usually the first thing that goes for me when I'm in, in a crisis mode. Living through tough times can be both mentally and physically draining. Constantly being in a heightened state of stress can lead to serious health problems. It can impact your immune and digestive systems, increase your risk of heart attack and stroke, leads to burnout and a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion. Since the body and mind are so closely linked, investing in self-care is an important part of building resilience and getting through tough times of great stress. When your body feels strong and healthy, so too will your mind. Make sure you get enough exercise. When you're dealing with chronic stress, you likely carry it somewhere in your body. Maybe your muscles are tense. Maybe you have back pain, neck pain, frequent headaches, insomnia, heartburn, upset stomach. Getting regular exercise not only releases powerful endorphins in the brain to improve your mood, but it can also help to ease that tension in your body and counteract those physical symptoms of stress. You always need to think about improving your sleep. When you're facing adversity, nothing wears you down or wears down resilience, like missing out on a good night's sleep. Often improving your daytime habits and taking time to relax during the day and unwind before bed can help you sleep better at night. You also need to obviously eat well there are specific foods that can help you help you build resistance, excuse me, resilience and weather those tough times. Rather, it's your overall dietary pattern that's important. Eating lots of processed and takeout food can take a toll on your brain and your mood, sapping your energy and weakening your immune system. A healthy diet, on the other hand, when that's low in sugar and rich in healthy fats can give you energy to focus and tackle the challenges that you're facing. Manage your overall stress levels. Taking steps to manage your overall stress can break the hold it has over your life, improve your mood, and help you build the resilience you need to hold up under pressure at this time. Five, look for meaning and purpose. It's easy to get overwhelmed and consumed by the crisis that you're facing. But whatever your circumstances, it doesn't have to define you as a person. You are not your crisis. By pursuing activities that bring purpose and meaning to your life, you can keep your problems in perspective, prevent them from overwhelming you, and maintain your identity. The Bible says, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. It's known as the golden rule, but it's Matthew 7, 12. Some people call it karma, and I agree, because the way you treat others is truly what does come back to you. And when you give help to others, especially when you're in the midst of a crisis, 
you know, it's very easy when you're in the middle of that to feel powerless and helpless. By proactively helping someone else, though, you can regain that sense of control as well as find purpose in your life. In fact, giving support can be just as beneficial as receiving support. Try volunteering, helping others in your neighborhood, giving blood, donating to a charity, or marching for a cause that's important for you. Or it could be as simple as holding the door open for somebody who's got who's struggling with a stroller and three little kids and a ton of groceries in their arms. You know, just it's just the simple act acts of kindness, of being nice and helping others that can put a smile on your face. Pursue your hobbies and interests as well. In turbulent times, it's important not to cast aside interests that nourish your spirit. For many of us, it's these things that define us as individuals and bring meaning to our lives. Whether it's playing a sport, caring for a pet, for me it's singing in church choir, also playing the piano. Um, that's the stuff that brings meaning to, to my life and also allows me to express my emotions. Um, <clears throat> as well as my pets, of course. But spending time doing what it is that you love can help you to drop pleasure from your pastimes. And it adds to your ability to cope with the stress of difficult times. So how do you stay motivated to develop this mindset of resiliency? Maya Angelou said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. So an important part of coping with adversity and making it through tough times is to foster qualities of persistence and endurance. Tough times don't last forever, but by their very nature, they're rarely over quickly. Deal with your problems one step at a time. If a problem is too big to deal with all at once, try breaking it down into smaller, more manageable steps. If your problem seems to have no possible solution, you can still take action, draw up a list, and research more about the subject, or seek advice of a trusted friend or a loved one. You also need to celebrate your small wins to keep motivated. To stay motivated and positive, take a moment to savor your small successes, noting that small wins can give you a welcome break from all the stress and negativity that you're facing and encourage you to keep going. Try to always maintain a hopeful outlook. While it's difficult to stay positive and hopeful in the midst of a crisis, many of us tend to blow our problems out of proportion and make them seem even more negative than they really are. Try taking a step back and examine your situation as an outsider. Are there rays of hope that you can focus on? Instead of worrying about what you fear may happen, Try visualizing the positive things that you'd like to have happen first. Express your gratitude as well. It, it may sound trite, but even when you're experiencing terrible times, it's usually possible to find one thing that you can be grateful for. The love of a pet, for example, a beautiful sunset, a caring friend. Taking a moment to acknowledge your gratitude for such small things can provide rest, respite or a respite from the stress and really boost your mood. Be kind to yourself, probably one of the hardest ones for me. <laughs> Everyone adjusts to change and upheaval differently. So don't criticize your coping skills or beat yourself up for every mistake that you make. Self-compassion is an important part of building resilience. So go easy on yourself. And in closing, we all go through bad times. We all experience disappointment, loss, and change, and we feel sad, anxious, and stressed out at various times in our lives. But building resilience can help you maintain a positive outlook, face an uncertain future with less fear, and get through even the darkest of days. Become a champion by using resiliency to slay your crucible. Come join me so you too can experience fabulous health benefits by building a resilient mindset. You can DM me at my Crucible Podcast Facebook page or at cruciblechampions.com. Take care, be blessed, and be resilient. 
This income testimonial is not representative of the average earnings that coaches achieve with Optavia. Only a very small number of coaches will achieve income that is within the range of this testimonial. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results only from successful sales efforts, which require hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches. In a clinical study, the group on the Optimal Weight 5-in-1 plan lost 10 times more weight than the self-directed group. Average weight loss for clients on the Optimal Weight 5-in-1 plan is 12 pounds. References include Dr. A's Habits of Health book by Wayne Scott Anderson, Your Life book by Wayne Scott Anderson, The 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership by Jim Diethmer, Diana Chapman, and Kaylee Warner Klemp, Lifelong Transformation, One Healthy Habit at a Time, Optimal Weight 5 in 1 Plan, Optimal Weight 3 in 3 Plan, Optavia The Four Components of Our System, Optavia Coach, the Habits of Health Transformational System, Your Life Book by Dr. 